if we go to the commodities world, typically the bottom is the marginal cost of production. Right. And um, there was talk in 2015 of 200 being that bottom for a lot of miners. Again, in this 3,500 to 4,500 range. $200. In back. 2015. That was the cost to mine one Bitcoin. Yes. For the, for the servers, the electricity, all the of rent, it. All of that. Okay. Um, and so that was what we based on in 2015 was $200. Right. Um, here we are in 2018 having the same conversation, different price range, but with people saying, okay, um, you know, miners are going to go offline, anything below these prices, and since miners get minted a, a large amount of new Bitcoin every day, they can be a price Is set. this the first time that, it is, that miners are effectively out of luck, meaning it costs more to mine a Bitcoin than the actual value of the Bitcoin? So there are many miners who are, who are paying upwards of $6,000, $7,000 to mine each Bitcoin right now. Is that the first time we've had this? We've had it uh, with specific miners. For example, KNC Miner, uh, I think it was in 2016, went out of business. One mining operation that was probably paying too much for electricity or poorly right. managing its operations, something like, uh, things like that. Um, right now, I think this is one of the uh, most unique times in terms of miners across the board being this is worried, a huge but it's out. not all miners, right? Because there are miners who potentially in China or other regions get Massive cuts on electricity, and therefore, why did it go from two hundred to six to seven thousand? Why did it go from two hundred to seven thousand? Well, why I, did the cost of production go from two hundred to seven thousand when oil's still fifty dollars? Sure, or whatever. So, energy. the way um, Bitcoin's network is supported is by volunteer machines around the world, which clear and settle Bitcoin transactions. Uh, for doing so, they get minted new Bitcoin every ten minutes. Right now, twelve and a half new Bitcoin every ten minutes. As the price of Bitcoin goes up, so too does the incentive to mine it. And so as the margins of existing miners go up, more and more uh, computers flood the market. Right. And so the because you, you would think the, that the more people come in, the cheaper it would get to do something. Well, no, because in this case, there's a limited no, amount I, I of ways. I understand that's weird. I, I, it, I don't. So but am I supposed to think now that it's, it, it doesn't cost 200 to mine now? It's definitely 7,000, so we're getting a 50% discount? Then, I, then we should buy it if it really is a 50% discount to what it costs to mine. So I think right now it's, it's the 35 to 4,500 range. Because you uh, believe people are going to come off. See, what happens is people could come offline, decide they're not going to mine, right? I know I this sounds completely it's crazy. Bizarre. But maybe it would come easier. offline, and then it would actually like be cheaper. Prices. Right, yeah. it would be actually Fine cheaper to mine. I get it. But Think of it as the market for Bitcoin security. Right, the number of computers securing Bitcoin's network makes it more and more secure. Except for that we need oil. I'm thinking right. it's we just do like need oil, oil. So we need oil, if it, we don't if, need if, Bitcoin. If it got as transparent who owns what, and, and it, it no longer, there's, there's no longer any appeal to, to those that are, need the surreptitious transactions. Is it still, is it, I, I mean, I've heard it, we're in a digital world, therefore digital currency is going to be worth a lot. But if it was totally regulated and taxed and, and, and uh, like everything else, is there, does it have an, an innate appeal yes. or is it less appealing? So I think the story of surreptitious transactions is mostly behind us. Okay. There have been some great research reports put out um, by University uh, School of London, University of Wisconsin-Madison that go through these different eras. Um, you know, early on right. it was geeks, then it was sin activities, and now it's really legitimate enterprise. We're not just buying fake IDs or having no. someone so rubbed out. I, I still want to know psychologically, what do you think has led to the downturn in terms of the price of Bitcoin right now? And then, to the extent that you're still bullish, what is going to... I am still bullish. Okay, then what is going to lead from a, a sort of philosophical, psychological change in the marketplace that's going to lead it back up again? Sure. So if we go back to December of last year, when we peaked at 20,000, um, that was an overheating market, right? We've seen, we've had seven periods where Bitcoin more than doubled in a month, right. uh, which I, I, I think of qualifying as a bubble. And they're always followed by greater than 50 Do we know if drawdowns. it's the same investors that, 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 that come back, or, do, or is, it, is it always a new group? But do they wash each other out? Because I think that's going to be an important component to this, given that there was a lot of volume, actually, I mean, on a relative basis, yeah. back when we were talking about 20,000. If you have a whole generation of investors washed out of this, who say, you know what, this was too painful for me. I can't do this again. This is Beanie Babies or yeah. whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And so the question is, who's going to come in to pick up the slack? Are you gonna, is there a new generation of investors who's going to say, I missed it the first time, now I got to do it now? So I think it's been mostly a retail-driven market to date. And what was interesting last year, and with our fund, we got a lot of institutional LPs um, who were dipping their toes in the water. And that's continued right. to happen. This By the year. way, we had a guest on uh, yesterday who suggested that institutional investors are not buying 
through these exchanges so the price of Bitcoin is not properly reflected. Uh, basically, the point was that some of this is being bought. OTC. OTC. Majority OTC for institutions. So we have no idea of what's really going on is what you're trying to say. Yeah. And that's interesting if true. Yeah. And there's, there's been a marked shift if you talk to the OTC desk this year versus the exchanges. Volumes, I haven't seen the numbers from OTC desks, um, but volumes are supposed to be on par. Um, so you've got double the volume really as it appears. Um, and you've got a lot what of... What are they priced at on the OTC market? About, about market. I mean, maybe 1% or 2% to market. If you're buying an exotic asset, it, it can be more. Troubles. I mean, I said tulip bulbs yesterday, and people were mad that I mentioned tulip. You mentioned Beanie Babies? I mean, you know, Beanie Babies? I, I, I want them to start. they got to send the tweets to you Modern now. era. Modern era. Beanie Babies? They you don't know, compare to tulip, tulip bulbs. Well, well, I, that around. was in the 17th century. I wasn't either. <laughs> but if we go to Beanie Babies or we go to... Beanie Beanie babies, that that's really low. Beanie if we go to Beanie Babies or we go to tulips, I think when, when you look at the activity around those markets, there wasn't the earnestness going on that there okay. is in these markets. Well, and and I, I think the hardest thing right now is we don't have any fundamental models to value these assets. We really just use relative valuation techniques, right. like comparing network right. value or network right. value to transactions. And so that's all relative without an anchor. Right. Um, but if we look at equities, it was a long time before we had fundamental right. valuation techniques.